Hello, I hope you are having a wonderful day. In this video, we will demonstrate nested for loops in Python. You may recall using nested loops to draw colorful mosaics with the Python turtle or to automate design in 3D modeling. Nested for loops consist of an outer loop which controls the number of repetitions of the inner loop. The inner loop controls the number of repetitions of the set of instructions. While nested loops have many uses, they are commonly used to generate two-dimensional arrays, as we will do in this example. This step and repeat process has many applications in printing, from trade show banners to computer circuits. Let's step through the code to see how this works. We start by defining our functions, rectangle and carpet. The function rectangle will be called within the function carpet. In the main program, we begin by importing matplotlib. Next, we set up our grid and axes. This time, our grid also gets a title by using the plt.title function. On line 35, we call the function carpet by assigning the global list variables x, c, and y, c to accept the returned lists from the function carpet. Our arguments for the local variables m, the number of rows, and n, the number of columns, are 2 and 3 respectively. The function carpet begins by initiating local empty lists for the x and y values used to draw the lines. The outer loop begins its first iteration, the index i equals 0. Next, the inner loop is initiated with index j equal to 0. To plot a square in the correct location, we are going to use i, j, and the function rectangle. Let's walk through one calculation using the index values of 0 and 0. Our formula is rectangle parentheses 2 times i plus 1, comma, 2 times i plus 2, comma, 2 times j plus 1, comma, 2 times j plus 2, close parentheses. Substituting 0 for i and 0 for j, we get rectangle, parentheses, 2 times 0 plus 1, comma, 2 times 0 plus 2, comma, 2 times 0 plus 1, comma, and 2 times 0 plus 2, close parentheses. This simplifies to rectangle, parentheses, 1, comma 2, comma 1, comma 2, close parentheses. Now we jump to the function rectangle and use the arguments we calculated to create lists to draw our first square. Rectangle returns these lists to x, s, and y, s in carpet, which are added to x and y. And there it is, our first square. Notice that we have included the plot and show functions within the function to check our progress as we go. We then run the inner loop a second time to create the second square. This time, i is still equal to 0 and j has now been increased to 1. Pause the video and try calculating the values for the second square. 
As expected, the x coordinates are the same and the y coordinates are greater, creating the second row above the first one. Our inner loop is finished for now. We jump back to the outer loop to increase the i counter to 1. And run through the inner loop to create a second column using i equals 1 and j equals 0. Then i equals 1 and j equals 1. And finally, the third iteration of the outer loop creates the third column using i equals 2 and j equals 0, and then 1. We now have lists of x and y values for each square, neatly separated by the line break keyword none. After exiting the nested loops, we have one more task, and that is to create the outer rectangle. This time, the variables m and n are used to generate the arguments for the function rectangle. The xo and yo lists for the large rectangle are added to x and y, which, at last, are returned to the main program for plotting. The rest is straightforward. We define our line color and width, plot our global lists xc and yc, and then display the results. Try importing this code into the Python app and experiment with different arguments for the carpet. What happens? How could you adjust the program to display any sized carpet on the grid? To sum up, nested loops consist of an outer loop which controls the number of repetitions of the inner loop. The inner loop controls the number of repetitions of a set of instructions. In this demonstration, we used nested loops to generate and display a two-dimensional array. I look forward to working with you in the next video.